hey, here, it's time to talk about resilience again and why you shouldn't neglect your constitution. No, you're winning me over with these. Uh, I you, mean, listen. You beat it into my head enough by now. And we have many more classes to go. Yeah. friends robert bevan here author of the caverns of creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories with me is cameron aka prince phantom and today we'll be discussing his picks for the best feats for a cleric yeah clerics pretty good great class all around don't really have many sure. glaring weaknesses um just a lot of good stuff feats for these guys yeah um yeah clerics are pretty tough they full casters yeah, they, proficiencies, yeah. The, so most of what we're going to be taking here is stuff that fills kind of some of the niches that the cleric spell list is make it missing and also helps with concentration. Um, oh, yeah, I noticed. You yeah. got your, uh, your greatest hits on here. Yes. Can't leave home without good old Warcaster. Nope. But um, there, there are the cleric spell list of the full casters is probably the weakest mostly because it lacks diversity um mm. it's a lot of niche stuff and some really good damage options um and a lot of clerics are helped by this through their uh, domain list so That's again true. this is just for the ger generic cleric though so yeah. we won't be assuming any of those um and i already mentioned it so we might as well start with it yeah you should probably take work for as soon as possible yeah i can't fault you for that um, clerics specifically really appreciate Warcaster. Now, if your table plays this granular granularly with the rules, I'm sorry, but I should mention that the spellcasting rules of this game are bad, <laughs> just like most of the other rules. <laughs> so, uh, and what way are you talking about specifically today? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the cleric is generally seen often holding a shield and a weapon, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to do that, and some clerics, especially certain subclasses, do want to do that, you actually have a lot of trouble casting most of your spells. Because while you can have your holy symbol emblazoned on your shield, and that can count for the material component of any cleric spells you cast that don't have a gold cost, mm -hmm. and you don't really cast the spells that have a gold cost in combat most of the time anyway, so don't worry about that. Um, it can't cover somatic components, which are the wigglies you do with your hands. Right. Uh, your hands are full, and therefore, it's a good portion of your spell list that you just can't cast. Warcaster fixes that. Now, that being said, most tables just hand wave that. Most tables do not follow that whatsoever. The new video game, Baldur's Gate 3, Baldur's Gate 3 hand waves that completely doesn't care about it probably the next edition of this game's probably not going to care about it but so, i mean that's not all that warcaster gives you no the main the meat of the feat is the concentration protection yeah. that's the reason you're taking it and clerics most of their good spells are concentration um you right at first level you've got bless you want to cast that at first turn of combat keep holding it up the whole time and never let go of it and that's going to be a huge buff to your whole party um and it, that rolls right into Spirit Guardians at level 5, which asks you to be close to enemies. So you're going to be taking some hits if you're doing the whole Spirit Guardians thing mm -hmm. and you don't have a different plan. But that's a build thing. If you're just playing Jarek Cleric, you're going to be in range to take some hits. You don't want to... <laughs> the worst thing in the world is I got my Spirit Guardians up, I walk up to the enemy, bonk them with my stick, they start their turn, they take the damage from the Spirit Guardians, they hit me in the head, and the spell ends. Yeah. <laughs> That's really not good. You've no, spent not fun. a third level spell on 3d8 damage. <laughs> Your cantrip could almost do that. <laughs> so, yeah, Warcaster is very important. Please don't neglect your concentration. It will make playing this game feel bad. <laughs> um, so, outside of that, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend in combination with the Spirit Guardian Spine, if that's what you're doing, 
most clerics are doing that. Uh, the telekinetic feat. You get no argument here. You know, I love me some force movement. Yeah, cleric gets to synergize with this perfectly all by itself with no synergy from anybody else needed. So with spirit guardians, and for that reason, I recommend you don't take this until level four or after. Don't take telekinetic as your starting feat. No. If you get a level one feat, probably take Warcaster. Then take the telekinetic level four. Um, it raises our wisdom, which is great, and also gives us a five-foot push and pull. Now, how does that synergize with Cleric? With Spirit Guardians, which you get at, level, at fifth level, so the level right after you get this, mm -hmm. you can cast the Spirit Guardians, walk up to someone to where the 15-foot range is just outside of them. They're just outside of the range. Pull them in with the telekinetic, and when they get pulled in, they take the Spirit Guardian's damage. When their turn comes around in combat, they take the damage again. So, for one, one enemy a turn, you can inflict your Spirit Guardian's damage to twice. Now there's a strength saving throw, and if they fail, yeah. and if they succeed, then they don't get pulled. And that's fine. Normally what you do in that instance is, you move up to within five feet of them, try and pull them in. If you fail, we'll just move in the last five feet. So they start the turn in the Spirit Guardians. You don't get the full the twice damage, but you do still get one instance of damage. So it's all upside. I I'd recommend telekinetic for uh, a lot of any any character whose friend has something like this. Yeah, the cleric just gets to be the one man show. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's its benefit. And you also get Mage Hand, an invisible mage hand, which is oh, just yeah. a nice utility. And especially uh, cleric... if you already have mage hand. You get better mage hand. Yeah, yeah. Clerics don't get mage hand normally. Um, so you know, you might Oh no, I know. Just uh that always impresses me. I wish they would do more like that in feats. I agree. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. Um so past that, uh feat selection is really opening up to a lot of um a lot of things that give you extra stuff to do with spells and other slight defensive bonuses. Magic Initiate for Find Familiar is a great option. Yeah. Um, clerics already get Ritual Casting, so the Ritual Caster feat kind of has a bit of diminishing returns. You could still take it if you wanted to, but I think the Cleric, because of their kind of sucky cantrip list, would actually kind of want to steal some cantrips from the Wizard. So yeah. I actually think Magic Initiate in this instance might actually, I would rate a little bit higher than Ritual Caster. For uh for cantrips, but I mean, clerics get ritual casting on cleric spells. Yes. Ritual caster would open that up to another list. Yeah, that's completely true. And I mean, what, if you... what, what ritual spells are clerics getting that uh, you know, that that's enough? Well, they get the the staples like detect magic, yeah. and um, a couple of other small things like that. The I I will say the best rituals are on the wizard list. They get the yes. higher level rituals like Phantom Steed mm -hmm. and um, Telekinetic Bond. Um, telepathic so, Bond. Telepathic Bond. Yes, yeah. thank you. Telekinetic is what we just talked about. Telekinetic Bond would be something pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you you all can push each other around, Ooh, but only you know each what? Other. No, I take that back. It would not be cool. That's uh, that's what we get with the uh, Pact of the Talisman. Oh yeah. <laughs> never mind you're right anyway <laughs> um yeah so it, i would say they're pretty even, honestly if, you, if you've got some cantrips that you really want if you're playing yeah. a melee, yeah, melee cleric want. if you're playing a melee cleric and you you know want to focus in on making a big attack every once in a while grabbing booming blade as a cantrip is part of that build um and either one can get you fine familiar which is probably what you're really after so Either way, uh, both feats are probably really good. Uh, Ritual Caster's 13 wisdom requirement is not an issue for any cleric, so don't, mm. e don't even have to think about that. All right. So um, past that, uh, hey, here, it's time to talk about Resilient again and why you shouldn't neglect your constitution. No, you're winning me over with these. Uh, I you, mean, listen. You beat it into my head enough by now. And we have many more classes to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, resilient. Uh, you want to take it? Um, no, clerics. I should mention already get wisdom saving throw proficiency. So with this, 
you are really good at saving throws. Um, the most common and most dangerous saving throws you're going to encounter are wisdom saves followed by constitution saves. Um, dexterity saving throws are the next most common, but most dex saves are just avoiding damage. Yeah. And, you know, there are other methods for also avoiding damage. And there's plenty of great ways to heal yourself. Healing is abundant in this game. And no, oh. I do not mean cure wounds. Well, no, but uh, we have neglected, I mean, clerics are gener generically known as healers. Uh, we haven't talked about that. No, and that's because there's not any feats that synergize with healing. <laughs> well, there's healer. That doesn't but synergize with sucks. healing. No. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Uh, healer is bad for a cleric to take, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, if you... Yeah, there's really not feats that restore hit points. Well, I mean, it, well, there's there's also chef. What, does that do chef, something? So chef gives you extra hit points when you when you do a short rest, uh, and also gives you um, a couple of treats you can hit up for temporary hit points. It is entirely out outclassed by inspiring leader and mm -hmm. literally any other form of temporary hit points. Uh, and cleric has a couple of ways to hand out temporary hit points that are much. Better. And they've they've got enough healing going on. Um, it's you. You mentioned it here in the article. Uh, you haven't said it out right now uh, during the video, but you know, don't play a healer. We don't. You know, that's not what a cleric's for. That we don't need a healer. There's so no. many ways to heal. I mean, no, yes, go back you and are check. Part of go that back and check as a cleric. Uh... You've got healing spells, but I mean, out outside of combat, you just heal. Yeah. Uh. Go back and check our uh, cleric subclass ranking, where uh, I firmly and confidently put life at last place, <laughs> because you don't need a healer in this game. I'm no. sorry. It's not necessary. And if you want to heal, there are ways to do it that are really, really good, and you can build toward that, and none of them need cleric. Well, I mean, but even if you, you want to be cleric, it's not for the healing. The healing's yeah. a nice thing you can do. You can get healing word. Boom. You're back on your feet. And that's but, all you uh, need. Yeah. And I mean, it's cool that at higher levels you get a spell like Heal that can mm -hmm. bring somebody up off of zero and actually have them survive a few more hits. That's neat. But that's still all she, you should be using it for. Yeah. Anyway, that's... side tangent. <laughs> I feel like I have to preach this every time I'm talking about clerics. But, and I will say, by the way, to the DMD community, most people have wisened up to this. To be honest, I've noticed that in most intelligent circles, people have wised up to this. <laughs> Don't read you're, into that statement calling, too much. You're calling a, a vast segment of people that are watching this stupid. <laughs> hey, our viewers are much more intelligent than that. Sam is right 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, past that, uh, the reason you take resilient, by the way, if you haven't caught on is to further increase our constitution saving through proficiency because we want to continue buffing our concentration because as we get into higher levels enemies hit harder and just strictly having advantage is not is no longer enough when you're dealing with saves of 19 and 20 so that's why um sure. pass that to more interesting stuff they touched is really good on a cleric all right why um, specifically on a cleric well, clerics don't get short-range teleportation options, so Misty Step is really, really good to have. And uh, the best option for clerics to grab with this is Silvery Barbs, which no cleric gets inherently. That's true. And that's a really great use for a uh, cleric's first-level spells. A cleric will find that when they get into higher-level play, they don't have great uses for their first-level spells. Bless is still a good buff even into the higher tiers, but you're going to have better spells to concentrate on most of the time. So Bless is a nice fallback, but you're not going to have a lot of uses for your first level spell slots. Silvery Barbs fills that perfectly. Yeah. You will use all of your first level spell slots <laughs> and the free casting it gives you and still be wanting for more. So uh, clerics also aren't that hard up on reactions. So it costing a reaction is fair game. Shouldn't have any issue with that. Yeah. So yeah. Just grabbing Misty Step and Silvery Barbs fills short-range teleportation and a great first-level spell reaction option. Both are holes in the cleric spell list. This feat fills both of them and gives you a bonus to your wisdom all at the same time. 
Highly recommend it for basically any cleric. Fill your holes. Yes. C- consistently and efficiently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. So past that, um, I'll skip talking about the uh, metamag- metamagic adept because I really only think it's good for one subclass. We'll talk about it when we get to that one. We'll subclass. be into the subclass feeds later. Yeah. Um, so past that, uh, lucky and tough, generically good feats are generically good, and uh, I think. There might be a case for taking tough a bit more highly than you normally would, so you're still not taking it until the late teams of levels. Um, uh, but right. because I thought you were going to say take it before lucky. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. All right. <laughs> uh, but it it might feel better to take. Let's say that because as a cleric, you do want to be in mid ranges, which means you'll be taking more attacks, which means that extra HP on a D8 class might feel nice. So a neat way to think about tough is because you're getting two HP per level, that's essentially increasing your hit die size by two. So you're kind of going from a D8 to a D12. Yeah, that's true. Now, now you don't roll a D12 when you short rest no. or anything like that. But you know, if you just want to visualize it, you now have the HP of a barbarian. So that's cool. A barbarian that didn't necessary. take tough. Yes. <laughs> so, it, 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 I don't think you should take it early, but it might feel better if you do take it. That's all. Fair enough. Yeah, um, so, Cleric gets... Cleric really gets to have its cake and eat it, too. Cleric is one of those classes that doesn't need feats much at all. Um, really, the only thing I would say it needs is to buff up its uh, concentration. That's it. Yeah. So I mean, if you just want to take Warcaster, yeah, if you just want to take Warcaster and just pump up your wisdom for the rest of your character's life, you'll be fine. I mean, we got Warcaster, we got Resilient, we got Silvery Barbs, we got uh, Lucky. Yeah, I think your concentration is pretty solid. Yeah, you you can really build into the defense with this if you'd like to. So there's. I, I've given you ways to buff, buff up your defense, which is already good as a cleric, and ways to expand your spell casting, which is a little bit lacking. So, you know, pick whichever you think serves you best. Yeah, I think this is a good list. Thank you, Cameron. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments. What what feats uh what feats do you think he missed? What feats do you think don't Make belong? Make a case for chef. There? Make a case for chef. Okay. I, I, I would love to fight that in the comments. All right. Um, yeah, thank you. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.